Business news from the Capital Region. This is Washington Business Report with ABC7 National Correspondent Rebecca Cooper. Thanks for joining us for a fresh look at business and finance in the Washington region. Coming up on today's show, we get expert advice on where the economy is headed and how to capitalize on predictors. Plus, our roundtable disciples what our wobbly markets mean, the ugly side of the latest job numbers, and yes, Ebola will take the temperature of the economy as the scare intensifies. But first, our one-on-one -on -one interviews. The race between Republican Barbara Comstock and Democrat John Faust to replace Frank Wolf in Congress has become one of the most closely watched and contentious races in the country. So we sat down with both candidates this week at the Great Eatery Cafe in Roslyn. Beyond those contentious 30-second ads you've seen nonstop, we talked to each candidate one-on-one -on -one about why they want the job on what they think they can do in Congress. In face-to-face -face meetings, Republican Barbara Comstock and Democrat John Faust have been talking about the issues impacting Virginia. But in these final days, 30-second ads are getting the most attention and reaching the highest decibels. Comstock's campaign ad buys this week focuses on Faust's tax record. John Faust voted to increase property taxes by 22%. His side points out when it comes to property taxes, comp stocks have come down while Faust has served as Fairfax County Supervisor. His campaign has been heavily running this ad, accusing Comstock of not disclosing work she did for the Workforce Fairness Institute. Barbara Comstock pushed a client's issues in the Virginia legislature and didn't disclose it. Her camp insists the work was done openly and properly disclosed. But perhaps the most contentious ad in this race has been this one, run repeatedly by the National Republican Campaign Committee. Democrat John Faust said. I don't think she's even had a real job. So what did you mean when you said that? Well, I misspoke, uh, you know, but Barbara Comstock was determined to make this race about me being a sexist. I was trying to convey that Barbara Comstock has a horrible record on women's health care issues, on jobs. Uh, her jobs were extremely hyperpartisan. They are not typical federal jobs. The former congressional aide, Justice Department official and partner in a law firm disagrees. Yes, it was uh, offensive, but I think it also displayed a lack of understanding of the jobs that people in this community do. And as my husband said, he said, can we um, have back all our real taxes that we paid all those on those real jobs if, if he doesn't think they're real jobs. But we wanted to get beyond these ad wars and talk to the candidates about what they want to do for Virginia, starting with why they would even want a job in Congress right now, given how difficult it is to get anything done. Everything that you need to get this country fixed is right in the 10th district, whether it's our technology community, um, our energy community, uh, our government employees who have a lot of solutions if we free them to let them to do them. So I feel I have um, the experience. I, I have lots of bipartisan results in the state legislature. Well, that's exactly why I want to go to Congress. Uh, you know, I love this country and I believe in our future. But uh, what's happening in Washington is unacceptable. It's dysfunctional. It's hyperpartisan. And I think I've demonstrated over the years that I'm a, a, a problem solver who can work across party uh, lines, who can you know, keep the public interest in focus and not necessarily a partisan interest. With so many different issues of importance to American voters, we asked each their top three priorities. Jobs are first and foremost, and I want to continue to work with the technology community because they can have so much promise in getting this economy moving again. We need to lower our business taxes, our business taxes, small business taxes, and then I also want to lower family taxes by increasing the child tax credit from the 1,000 it is to now up to 2,000. Families need to be able to keep more of their own money to help with their education, to help with childcare, to help save for college. And finally, we really have to make sure we strengthen our military and stop the sequester cuts. First and foremost, it's about national security and this very dangerous world we live in right now. We know we need to have the strongest military in the world. The first thing is to address the partisanship and to try to bring people together and uh, start the process of problem solving. Secondly, I think education is the absolute most important investment we can make uh, in this uh, nation. We're competing on a global basis uh, with people who are making the investments. And then uh, jobs and opportunity. 
Given how difficult it is to get anything done in Washington, we asked each candidate for an example of something they took from start to finish that has benefited this area's economy. Well, my data center's legislation um, in Virginia, in Loudoun County, in the 10th district, data centers are a booming industry. And we were taxing them in a way several years ago where they were going to leave and go to other states who were had a more of a 21st century tax code. So we said we need to have a 21st century tax code that rewards keeping businesses here. So now this is an industry that's growing by tens of millions of dollars over the next uh, decade and they're staying here in the 10th district and growing. Well, it's hard to say that anyone took the Silver Line Metro from start to finish because it's been around, I think, since uh, Benjamin Franklin and George Washington. But uh, certainly, it was during uh, the time I was on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors that it started moving forward. When it comes to Obamacare, repeal it, fix it, or leave it alone. I have said we need to repeal and replace it, and I very much emphasize replace. What the business community needs, what I hear all the time, is the need for certainty. We need it in government, we need it in government contracting, we need it in business, and we need it in health care, because that's a life and death issue. We need to deal with pre-existing conditions, which I support dealing with, but we need to have health care portable, we need to have it affordable, have certainty that your premiums aren't going to go through the roof. I hear from businesses 63% increases, 87% increases in their premiums. But you know health care costs were headed up anyway. I not, just want to double down on this. Numbers. But a lot of experts say that they think that they are bending the curve a little bit. Do you really think that repeal, a complete repeal, is the right way to go at this stage? I think we do have to start over. And I think we need to, to provide certainty about what's going to work. What this president has done is suspended all kinds of pieces of it. So that's creating uncertainty. So we need to start over with something that we can all agree on that we, and it should be bipartisan. It needs to be fixed, but repealing it is the wrong approach. One place I would start is uh, with the Cadillac plans. Uh, you know, we're, employers are getting penalized in uh, regions like Northern Virginia where healthcare costs are more expensive than they are in other parts of the country. So instead of basing the uh, Cadillac plan on uh, the cost of insurance, uh, maybe base it on the type, uh, what you get for your coverage. And of course, there are a long list of other issues at stake in this campaign. To learn more about where each candidate stands, take a look at our Washington Business Report Facebook page. We have a link to WJLA's comparison on both candidates on some of the top issues, including taxes, transportation, and jobs. We also have a link to the Loudoun County Chamber of Commerce debate, where the candidates went in depth on issues impacting the economy and much more. Check it out. And when we come back, our small business spotlight, that's next.